and welcome back to another BBOD talk on our YouTube channel. Today I have Dr Larissa Yarovea with me from Southampton University and we're going to be discussing all things cryptocurrency. So to begin with Larissa, if you could just provide like an introduction to yourself and what made you become interested in a career in finance? Hi, hi Hannah, my pleasure. Hi, that's okay. Um, my name is Larissa. I'm a deputy head of the Center for Digital Finance at Southampton University, and I'm a lecturer in finance there. I'm also an associate editor in a number of journals like International Review of Financial Analysis, Journal of International Financial Markets Institutions and Money, and also International Review of Economics and Finance. I think my journey in finance is quite interesting. Originally, I'm from Russia, from Moscow. And all my life, I thought that I will build a career in mathematics. I was very, very passionate about math. But in 2007, 2008, when it was the global financial crisis, my plans changed significantly. And I became so curious about the world of finance. And I was reading financial news about crisis, credit crunch, contagion. And I decided to go to finance university in Moscow and start my career in finance. So I think uh, now this math background, of course, helping me in research and uh, in the teaching. So I think it worked quite well. <laughs> That's very interesting. Um, it's interesting to hear, like, you came from a diff from another background, and then you sort of got that experience from what happens there, and then you can use that, and that kind of inspired you to then go on and start your career in finance. So now moving on a little bit to cryptocurrency, what do you think about the future of cryptocurrency in say around 10 years from now? Do you think there's a possibility it could be used for transactions in everyday life and take over sort of Visa and card, debit cards, that sort of thing? Oh, it's a very interesting question, very tricky one to be honest. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, cryptocurrency is not the stage of financial innovation. Yeah, brought us by general technologies and increase of the computer power. Nowadays, cryptocurrency is the most advanced and innovative uh, financial products on the market. But within 10 years, we don't know which other technological breakthrough will be. Therefore, if you just thinking a little bit philosophically about it, we can expect that something will come up after cryptocurrency, maybe some new technology, new financial instrument, and maybe it will take over the cryptocurrency. But if you look at the cryptocurrency, how we know them now, how we can see them and take in the information what we have nowadays, I think there are two possible directions. First, the cryptocurrency markets become a little bit more regulated than nowadays, and then it's increased the use of the cryptocurrency and potentially potentially uh, cryptocurrency can be used as a, any other money yeah so mm. it would increase in the use of the cryptocurrencies however here another problem that should be addressed exactly i think this in 10 years time it's environmental sustainability of the cryptocurrencies whether what will be the impact on the environment from the perspective of the electricity consumption, energy consumption, what will be more efficient to have a digital money or just issuing traditional money and just to have the traditional financial system like we have nowadays. Yeah, so this is quite uncertain at the yeah. moment. Yeah, I guess with the technology changing constantly, you just never know what might happen next. You know, like in a year's time, it could have changed so much. And then in 10 years, it could be completely different. And like you say as well, there's this thing of always looking at what is the most sustainable in a way, what is going to be best for sustainability and like our environment and that sort of thing. We need, that's su such a big thing at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, another thing that we can highlight here is the difficulties associated with the cybercrime. Yeah, obviously. Mm quite a big problem and I think within 10 years some solutions should be offered to make cryptocurrency really much more secure financial instrument yeah this confidence of, of all the users that yeah we can invest in cryptocurrency and we can cash out it whenever we want yeah yeah and, you know, uh, and to protect from the cyber crime from cyber attack mm. Do you think then this could have an impact perhaps on like Bitcoin, that maybe Bitcoin in the future might no longer be the leading coin, that 
sort of other things might have taken over since then? Absolutely. I think it's natural thing, yeah, just to follow in our discussion, particularly about sustainability, because we know that Bitcoin is the mineable currency. Yeah, so it's mm. actually mining process, uh, which is very electricity consuming in comparison yeah. to some other cryptocurrencies who are non mineable, for example. Mm. Therefore, in the long term, I believe, uh, obviously, some changes in terms of the market leader can happen. Yeah, some of the cryptocurrencies yeah. that are currently at the bottom one can completely die out, you know, they can die and uh, exit the market. Uh, therefore, there is still quite a bit of uncertainty that, uh, because it's new markets, it's very... Uh, limited amount of information available at the moment about their behavior, very limited research in the cryptocurrencies as well. So I think within 10 years, definitely we will explore it more and understand it more. Yeah, definitely. I guess as well, it's getting sort of a lot of people still don't understand it. There's a lot of people that have no, still have no knowledge of it. It's still quite hidden from kind of the masses in a way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now moving on to, we know that you're organising the second cryptocurrency conference in Southampton this year. Would you be able to sort of give a summary of what this conference is going to be all about and what the visitors can kind of experience when they come to this conference? Absolutely. Uh, so the Cryptocurrency Research Conference will be held on the 15th, 16th June at Southampton and our Highfield campus. It's the second edition of the Cryptocurrency Research Conference. Last year it, it was uh, in Cambridge and under Ruskin University. And this year we have it at Southampton. Yeah. So the main idea behind this conference is to bridge the gap between practitioners and be between academics because there are a lot of research is going on in academia and there are lots of debates and discussion in the real world and the business among policymakers, practitioners, cryptocurrency users. We try to bring them all together at the conference. Yeah. So this year we'll have three keynote speakers, Professor Brian Lucy from Trinity Do uh, College Dublin. We also have uh, Gary Hillerman from London School of Economics. And we have cryptocurrency expert Shane Corbett from Dublin City University who will deliver keynote speech. Also, we are welcoming the papers, not only in cryptocurrencies, but in broad area of digital finance, I would say. So we expect to have around 48 presenters on the conference. Oh, wow. As comparison, yeah. <laughs> to uh, last yeah, year. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's quite a big event. But yeah. yeah. It will be much larger and broader and it will span over two days just to accommodate more speakers and more presenters. Yeah. Uh, also, what our participants can generally benefit uh, from, uh, the, from the attendance. Uh, for academics, obviously, it's exciting publications opportunities because we are working with five journals uh, that all have quite a good impact factor, particularly economics letters, financial journal, uh, he, uh, it offered special issue and dual submission possibility uh, is available for all the submissions to the conference. So all the papers who will be presented, they could be considered to be, get published in economics letters or any other journals. So also on the fun side, so we will have a gala dinner, we'll have some social event yeah. and lots of networking opportunities for all the yeah from outside the academia. We will have a panel discussion when the academics and practitioners will have the opportunity to debate and to discuss the current problems of cryptocurrency and the future of the cryptocurrency as well. So it should be interesting debate and very interesting insightful discussion around yeah. two days. Oh, wow. It, yeah, it sounds very exciting as well. And the fact that you're sort of going to be able to bring together lots of different people that are in, in the crypto industry interested in it and sort of bringing all these people together and they can have like social interaction as well, networking and that sort of thing. Sounds very exciting. <laughs> okay, so just moving on to as well about, we'd love to know more about the Center for Digital Finance. It's something I had a bit of a look into and researched and it'd be interesting for our audience to know more about this. Uh, so the Center for Digital Finance has been established in 2014. Yeah. It's a leading hub for exchanges uh, of the ideas in the field of the digital 
finance and we are trying to provide a contribution to this field and to create multidisciplinary collaborative and impactful research in this area so for all the members of our center the center creates opportunity for networking opportunity for collaboration uh, opportunity for skills development and of course we're organizing different events research seminars we have weekly research seminars and inviting different speakers from other institutions as well just to create a larger scale projects and work together also of course the center is open to work with businesses with industry we really believe that the best contribution to knowledge nowadays can be created only by collaboration between practitioners and academics. Yeah. I think this is the direction where we're moving at the moment and we are happy to help to solve business problems and mm. to further build the linkages with uh, industries. Yeah, so it sounds, again, very interesting, like a hub for people to be able to connect their ideas and sort of like solve problems and discuss things, which is always a good thing to have and to bring like academics together with these industry people and sort of solve problems and discuss ideas is always such a good thing. <laughs> and then for our final question, I just wanted to ask you a bit about one of your research papers, which was exploring the dynamic relationships between cryptocurrencies and other financial assets. If you just sort of be able to give us a bit of a summary of this research paper. All right, yeah. Uh, this is very interesting paper and one of the first papers that actually been published on this topic on the interlinkages between oh, okay. cryptocurrencies and other financial assets. So what was interesting there? The generally cryptocurrency could be considered as a safe haven and they can provide quite good opportunities for portfolio diversification because generally the risk and the volatility and different shocks that originated on other markets, on the financial markets, that are not transmitting to the cryptocurrencies directly. So cryptocurrencies, so far in this period of time when we analyze it, they were decoupled from other financial assets. And the correlation between cryptocurrency and other markets was relatively low, which is good from the diversification perspective. Mm. However, we couldn't say that it's completely, you know, brilliant and really <laughs> Assets to invest in cryptocurrency. Yeah. Of course, it has its own risk. The prices for cryptocurrency are volatile. And generally speaking, the cryptocurrencies are linked with each other. Mm. So the prices for cryptocurrencies are moving together. Therefore, if you really want to diversify your portfolio, you need to invest in different asset classes, like, for example, mm. gold, in metals, uh, in precious metals. For, uh, stock markets at, at the same time to allocate a small amount of your portfolio to the cryptocurrency like this you can benefit from rapid growth of crypto markets but at the same time you know diversify the risk mm. okay yeah that i think that could be really helpful to some of our audience that are sort of like just getting into cryptocurrency or into trading and trying to learn more about it so that's definitely very interesting and it sounds like you're doing some really interesting things. The cryptocurrency conference, I'm sure that's going to be so exciting. And it's nice that it's another one and it was sort of at Ca in Cambridge and now it's in Southampton. So sort of two different locations. That sounds really interesting. And the Center for Digital Finance as well. And sort of learning more about your thoughts on the future of cryptocurrency. That was also very good to hear about as well. So thank you very much for joining us today, Larissa. Thanks. Thank you very much for inviting me and for having me here. It was a pleasure. That's OK. I hope everyone enjoyed our conversation today and be sure to come back soon and check out more of our videos. So we'll see you all soon. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.